all my people, welcome to Through a Different Lens Podcast. I'm your co-host, Dej. I'm your co-host, Joe. And right now, we got a special <laughs> guest again. Sorry to interrupt your flow. Get me, we've had her on before. She was fantastic the first time we had her on, so without a doubt, we had to get her back. It was so nice. We had to do it twice. You're damn right. Would you like to reintroduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Tash. Um, I'm kind of like the original, well, not original, but I'm like kind of like the standing co host of this podcast. Claim so. it. Listen, <laughs> stand on it, man. Stand on it. Claim it. <laughs> Jacob, she's trying to replace you. Yeah, I am actually. <laughs> Get me, but how you been, Tash? It's been, uh, we were looking up before and before we started, and we were saying it felt like, or you, you said it felt like a year since yeah, it did we've had like, you on. Yeah. And it was only literally, what, four months ago? Yeah. So, it's been a long time. Yeah. Well, nice to see you guys. Five months. Yeah, yeah, shit. Sure. Yeah, listen, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on, young. Get me. How you been over the last five months, etc., from the NBA playoffs up until now? now it's been boring <laughs> because there's been no basketball. So it's kind of like trying to find things to occupy my mind and, you know, um, yeah. What would you say has somewhat kept you occupied within that time period? Do you watch the Euros? I did. That were good. <laughs> I saw you tweet about Euros. That quite were a bit, good. Actually. That's. I think that's the only time I watch football. Actually, uh, I don't watch like the normal Arsenal or Liverpool game. Mm. But that was actually the Euros was quite good. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I liked it. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. Well, I mean, like we said at the beginning, it's great to have you back. Um, and obviously, we could just get into it because it's about to kick off uh, your beloved NBA. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and obviously, we recently, it's crazy because when I saw the, uh, well, I say news, the update on, I'm going to start off with Kawhi Leonard. I literally saw that tweet and then I, I was busy doing something. Um, obviously, he's out indefinitely, no surprise. Um and then, as soon as I went on Twitter, the you first, see me. your tweet's the first one that came up. What did I say? I, I can't even remember what I said. Oh, I can't even remember. But it's like your reaction, I was like, it just worked out perfectly, time wise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, obviously. I'm not surprised about Kawhi, to be fair, because there was something lingering on. Um, and obviously, we're not aware of it, but he's been out for, well, been injured for a very long time. Yeah. Um, and then he tried to be on the Olympic team, yeah. which is <laughs> <laughs> madness. Like, you're getting a free, you know, gold medal. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so, Bede got one of those. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's something going on with him and we, we don't know. Like, mm-hmm. That knee injury must be um, really, yeah, well, it is really bad. Like, yeah. Or what? I don't even know what, what um, it kind of like named itself to be. Yeah. I, it's a mad shame because obviously, like, when he's healthy... Oh, he's a beast. <laughs> he's mm. literally, well, in this generation of players, you could just say LeBron, Steph, KD, then Kawhi is next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just, because I remember when, before, like, he dropped out of Team USA, um, when him and Embiid got selected, me and you were talking on Twitter about it. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I didn't like the fact of him being on the team. Mm. Uh, Joel Embiid too, but yeah, yeah. like Kawhi, no. because he didn't play with the Clippers that that season. Mm. He didn't end with them either. So for th- for him to just go on the team mm-hmm. was just it didn't make sense to me. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was definitely surprised when yeah. he got selected. Then when he got dropped slash left, it was just like I wasn't surprised then. Yeah, no, but like my thing was. Y- he would have known his, he knows his body won absolutely the Clippers knew his situation the yeah. fact that they accepted it obviously he's not been on an Olympic team I don't think he had never has and then Team USA they know like everything that goes on so if he was just going there to train yeah. and they said it in that capacity which they normally which they normally do in the, the past yeah but now process. they do this stupid selection which I don't agree with by the way yeah um but yeah, for them to even select him was just mad wild. Mm, yeah, the, I just found it found it so weird, like when he basically dropped out, because I'm like, you know what you were going. Everyone knows what they're going in for yeah. for that period of time, innit? Mm. 
and then it was just and apparently like pre his announcement he was looking good within the Team USA scrimmages apparently and stuff uh, like that so just yeah uh, obviously Dej Dej is an undercover Clipper fan oh so yeah. I mean I'm a fan of Harden isn't it <laughs> So where he goes, I go. Yeah, until same he with Yadi. Wherever he goes, I go. So I, 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 I agree. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not really surprised that he that he dropped out. I was more surprised that he got selected. Mm. Mm. But my biggest surprise on that squad was Embiid getting selected. Yeah. Because I believe that he should not have even been selected. Absolutely. And it was ironic that in the final was USA and France. Mm. And he, and he almost he never... Get, he always gets booed, by the way. Well, when they were playing. Yeah, he got to embrace it, though. Yeah, he has to, yeah. man. But once he done the citizenship switch, I was like, he done it for a reason because he knows Team USA want him, innit? So, like, once he actually got selected, I weren't surprised. My only thing was, and I think we were saying it on Twitter, was just, like, you're not healthy for your actual team. <laughs> Mm. But you're healthy for the gold. But at the same time, you want to win something. But not all players get that chance. I think for me with Joel Embiid was the fact that he said he wanted to play for France or something along those lines. I think mm. years ago, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously now, you know, he's played for Team USA. I feel like it was kind of like an easy... You know Team USA is going to win gold, like, mm. no doubt about it. Everybody would want to be on the team and get yeah. it completely. But I feel he should have played with France. I think I remember seeing that like, once his US move got approved, etc. He was saying he's doing it for his son because his son was born in the US, yeah. etc. So, a story along those lines. I was like, "Well, whatever you want to feed the public." Bloody bloody blah. <laughs> to me, it is what it is like because. You could say USA should have been his third option. Mm. Obviously, Cameroon first, uh, France next, and then mm -hmm. USA. But hey, maybe maybe him being <laughs> with the greats would help him in the future. But then I deep, then saw, obviously we're talking about Kawhi still, but I then saw MB supposedly say last week that he doesn't think he'll be able to play back-to-back -back again. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's like... He's, he's, won, he's won his thing. Well, he's won something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's it for him now. The, I just think basketball now is just getting a bit soft, mm. in my opinion. What I do think you think? It's, it's, getting, it's getting a bit tailored or tapered. Yeah. So when you mean soft, I do get what you mean. Because now I feel like teams are, even in the regular season, they're just getting ready for playoffs. Mm. That's when they want to play hard. But the problem in that is... When you just play soft for like, let's say, at least 50% of the games or like 40% of the games, when it's time for you to play hard, your body's not used to it anymore. So yeah. it's going to break anyway. Yeah. So now to say that you're going to taper for the postseason, but anything can happen. Like this is us, 82 games is a long season it anyway. It's a long season and your body does get battered. But when it's... You know, when it's um, off season, that's when you're supposed to be getting in shape. I just don't feel like Joel Embiid has been in shape. Mm. He doesn't look in shape to me at, at all. Has ne has never well, not has never been, but like last season to me, he wasn't in shape at all. Mm. Um, it's hard to kind of know what his version of in shape is though. Yeah, because he's kind of like a one of one, isn't it? He's just so big. Mm. Like yeah, but when you see them coming, they look tired. But, like, Jokic, for instance, he does not look in shape. <laughs> Even but his, his, his game is like that, though. Yeah, but, no, I hear it, but that's what I'm saying. Because he's so, like, so big, like, like and Beach just naturally got a relaxed... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a good example. So. That's a really good example. But, um, yeah, he kind of, like you said, kind of like, he's, that's his game. Mm. Well, Joel Embiid, he just looks tired on the court to me. Mm. It's always looking tired, man. But um, yeah. I mean, like at least with Kawhi, Kawhi has more credit in the bank because of what he's done as a player. What he's or what 
two-time yeah. NBA yeah. champion. Absolutely. <laughs> two time. And what he did for the t- Toronto Raptors was yeah, it, that was it was sick. Yeah. Like Richard. I could always yeah. remember that championship. Mm. With, you you with put them. you put that city on a map. Absolutely. It was already on the map, but absolutely. The country. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 literally. Because obviously, like KD got injured then, and then Clay got injured that finals as well, but. Mate. You still have to go and win it. Yeah. So, no, Kawhi, it's a shame, man. Especially like when, I think we spoke about it a couple of episodes ago, when we were just talking about the Clippers, mm. um, new facilities and the arena. And obviously, LA boy, they'd, uh, he's the face of the franchise. They'd want him to officially open the new arena. Um, the Clippers were LA for, until last season. Well, until this season coming up now. They were LA. What do you mean? Harden. Oh, he's talking about the players. The players. Okay. Okay. Harden, PG, mm-hmm. Westbrook. Kawhi, Westbrook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're starting for all LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Come on, well, come on. <laughs> Russell's coming off the bench, but yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. No, it's true. And then it's bad, like. It's blown up, man. I think unexpectedly, Harden's the one that stayed longer than, or not long. Obviously, he hasn't been there for long, but I don't think people expected him to stay. As long, in LA, yeah, mm. with the Clippers. And I mean, where is he gonna go? Yeah, I mean, mm. ask ask his agent. <laughs> well, <laughs> according to my sources, <laughs> there's nowhere, there's nowhere I can see Harden going now. Nah, he's not. He's he, no, nah, he, no, he can go anywhere, but it's whether or not he wants to go, isn't it? Depends what he wants mm. out of the next phase of his career. Yeah. If he wants to just enjoy life, then you can always go back to Houston. You can go to Miami. Mm. But he's an LA boy, so he wants to stay in LA anyway. Yeah. Like he can literally go anywhere because he's made he's made his money in it. Even though he left some on the table, but he's yeah, he's, he's made his money. He's left a bit over the last couple of years. Mm. Well, hence kind of why he left Philly because he thought he had that agreement the year before when he left money on the table that he was gonna get paid more. Yeah. The following year, probably. I'd say he suited that Philly team, but at the same time, it's just and now they really did suit that yeah, Philly team. Or like they could have built on mm, what they had. Yeah, Absolutely. they could have done something good with it that. It was just injuries, Joel Embiid and him. I don't know. Mm. Mm. But now, like obviously PG, PG. even. Do you think PG the reason why Kawhi? Well, because he's been, you know, in the press kind of like not happy with the whole Kawhi situation mm. when, when he was in, well, when he was on the Clippers. Do you think that's the reason why he w- wanted to move elsewhere? Or what's your thoughts? I think it played a contributing factor because yeah. he basically alluded to it a bit on his podcast or when he was asked about on another podcast, one of the two. And he knew like, Obviously, he want, effectively wanted the max, but he knew he wasn't going to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was just that feeling of, all right, am I really, obviously I might be wrong, but am I really as loved here as I expected to be? Um, even though he's had his injury history in the past, he's actually yeah. been healthy yeah. of recent, way more healthy than Kawhi, for instance. Yeah. Like, PG's actually played well for the Clippers. Yeah. I think he made the All-Star again last season, didn't he? Yeah. So, it's just like... I like his game. Yeah, no, way. PG's game is smooth. I man. like his it's game. It's nice. And I think he's a superb fit for the Sixers. Mm, like, absolutely. For Maxi and Embiid. Absolutely. It's just, with the Sixers, it's all on Embiid's health. Absolutely. So, I don't know if the Clippers are going to regret not re-signing PG. Because um, the West is very strong. <laughs> the West, yeah. The West. Yeah, it'll be easier for PG in the East, man. Yeah. Yeah. Especially from... Well, we, we hope so. <laughs> Yeah, we just need to get Boston <laughs> out of it. That's going to be hard. Because yeah. <laughs> they've, they've, they've got a taste of winning now. And they've got, they and, and they're, players got chip on, chips on their shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's about time. What, that they... Yeah, it's about time that they have chips on the shoulders. Well, they always kind of nah, have. Nah, no. But they've got, like... You now, it, now, it's, now it's, like, defined that they've got a chip on their shoulder because... I mean, obviously, when we might come to talking about Boston, like no one, no one likes them. I do. do I like them. Okay. I mean, they're yeah, 
they're not as liked yeah. compared to the Why? other dude. I, I think Celtic's probably their history. Obviously, yeah, their they're their history. Oh, it's like a Boston thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, How about, I'm a Londoner, man. I don't, I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, <laughs> from a basketball point of view, they're not like one of the like teams. Obviously, they're arguably the well, second biggest franchise, them Lakers, mm. whatever way you want to go. It's Lakers, but like, bro. the Lakers are liked universally. Do you know what I mean? Cause they're, they're, just cause they're, not like, they're just not exactly they're just not liked as much now because of LeBron mm-hmm. like but that's just anywhere LeBron goes and it'll go either way mm. whereas like the Celtics it's just mm, yeah hot and cold whatever whereas and my point on like them not having a chip on their shoulder usually the defending champs won't have as much as a chip on their shoulder mm-hmm. But now, with Jalen Brown not getting set, selected for Team USA, mm-hmm. in public, he's basically tweeting about it. And then Jason Tatum, when he was with Team USA, he not, didn't play. Not really playing, not getting minutes like that. And yeah. then Brown winning Finals MVP over Tatum. Obviously, that's more of a internal war. Like, yeah, that's that's in house kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, Tatum might feel, feel away because. As he didn't play well. He didn't play better than Jalen Brown. I don't think Jalen Brown played better than him, though. Mm. And I think Tatum really? backed it up. I think Jalen Brown made big shots. That's what he did. But Tatum led them in all categories. And people forget that. Or in their main categories. Mm. Like, I just feel like, because Tatum's are seen as a higher pedestal, if he's not hitting what people expect of him to hit, then, and if Jalen Brown's close, because they are close in terms of ability, mm-hmm. then, like, Jalen Brown hit the big shots again, like, the first game one in the Eastern Conference final against the Pacers to take it to overtime. Things like that, like... And those matter in that count? Yeah, no, it does. But from Jalen Brown winning Eastern Conference finals MVP, I was like, it's given him a bit more of a footing for the finals MVP and schlack. Sh- Obviously, not to say people should go back to watch the games. That's just wrong and stuff. But I think overall, mm. Tatum was the better player in it. But it, I'm not disappointed that Brown got it over him, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's just like Jason Tatum, he needs to rise a, a bit more, admittedly. Also, do you know what? Let's leave this to, to the fans here. Was Jason Tatum... Was Jason Tatum's performance more important than Jalen Brown's performance? Or how would you word that question for everyone? No, that's a, that's that's really what you've just said right there. Let I mean, I've know. got some I've got some Boston um, Celtic f- uh, friends, diehard Boston Celtic friends. I mean, they've got opinions about Tatum, but. To be I'll, fair, ask, I'll ask them. I think when we done obviously our pre-finals predictions when you were last on. Um, I didn't want them to win. Yeah, and <laughs> when the Celtics won, a lot of people came, not came back for you, but came back in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, so, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine with that. Fans, like, the, either the ones you know, the yeah. ones that we know and stuff I'm like fine that. with that. I do not yeah. like Boston uh, at all. Never will. I'm sorry, I, I just don't. Me, because obviously I've been a, I'm a LeBron guy in it, so I've never liked them. That's my thing, so... His rivalry from Cavs, he in Cavs, mm. like it's always been like that. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Fair. I'm like their players. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like the whole rivalry aspect, and then maybe just external things like say fr- um, fans and stuff like that. But yeah. like that point, don't really bother me as much. But it's just like the green's nice. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, nice color. Yeah, so now I was I was looking at a Jalen Brown um, really? jersey. Yeah, man. I got a Tatum one, but I got a white one. Ah, I got nice. one for just before holiday. I was like, yeah, this one's sweet still. So, <laughs> I, I was like, first time I'm, me even thought of buying a Celtics jersey, but I was planning an outfit. So I was yeah. like, yeah, I got this. But yeah, no, it's it's interesting you saying that they should have even more of a chip on their shoulder, those mm-hmm. two players. Um, and obviously they've got a very good all-round team and we'll come like later in the episode talking about, say, our predictions and stuff like that. But... I think the Celtics can be <laughs> potentially very dangerous this oh, year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can see them in the finals again. Mm. Um, but it's just 
So he had a clear path to the finals. Yeah, uh, a very, very clear path. But it's just, it's just down to injuries, mm-hmm. like it, it like it is always with all the teams. Injuries, um, and how far that team is going to carry be carried to the finals. Um, I mean, hopefully, some of our teams will, you know, get there, but. But I definitely think Boston will be there again this year. 100%. Like, I mean, what you were saying at the beginning of the episode in terms of talking about the like NBA being soft overall, they're actually one of the, in terms of star players, Tatum, Tatum and Brown play. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. They actually, so they're really battle tested. Like you guys saying you want players to play more so someone they'll alleviate from injury. Even when like I was when I was watching the starting five, I'd always known this about Tatum, but I think Did was, you not listen to what his dad said? His dad saying something about like They need to see like the beast in him. Yeah. Which but, what I've been and one of my friends have been saying like he's just maybe because that's his not, I think not his, his personality. personality yeah. and what I you think that, he's too nice? I do think he's too nice, <laughs> but obviously now I, I can see after watching that, like, you know, that is his personality. He's not like a LeBron yeah, where he's like, yeah, you know, yeah. pumping himself up and stuff like that. But, I, I get it. Yeah, no, just going back to, like, in terms of them being battle-tested, those guys are crazy. Tatum is one of the he- healthiest players in the NBA. Mm. Like, he's been to, what, four Eastern Conference yes, finals or yeah. something yeah. like that. And Jalen Brown, too. Yeah. He has been healthy, hasn't yeah, he? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... They're one of the few mm. top teams where their best players are actually always available. Yeah. Like, they're not on this, ah, oh, we're taking games off as much. No, no game off, managers, isn't it? Yeah, they only take off games because their record's so good, like last season. <laughs> the odd times, stuff like that, but they're there. So, I think them winning the, the chip this year and then even having more of a chip on their shoulder is really dangerous for the rest of the league. Mm. Very Obviously, the East, we expect it to be better if everyone's healthy. Mm-hmm. But they're battle-tested. They know how to take pain. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Their pain tolerance is higher. So Let me ask you this question then. In the East, who are the top contenders? You want me to go? Go, yes. go ahead. Books. Mm. Are we doing five? Yeah, so Boston. Choose as much as you want. Books, Cavs, mm. New York, mm. for sure. And there's one more. Oh, we'll do the top eight from last season. Pacers. Okay. Mm. So teams that finished top eight were the Celtics, Knicks, Bucks, Cavs, Magic, Pacers, Sixers, I about them. and Heat. Okay. It depends on where Jimmy Butler's head is for Miami. I don't know who's on Miami now. Um, <laughs> Their roster is basically more or less the same. But I'd, So my top five are those teams. However, I did... Hold on, say your five again. Bucks, yeah. Cavs, Knicks, Celtics, Celtics, and Pacers. Pacers, okay. and then my probably my six six uh, team would be Orlando. Okay. Because they really gave the Cavs a hard time in the playoffs. Oh, okay. did you say seventy sixes? No, I didn't. Ooh. Mm. Was that on purpose? Joel Embiid. Mm. Yeah, but do you not think like? Yeah, but you've got to talk, you've got to think about who are on those five teams that I mentioned. If Joel Embiid is not playing or healthy, mm. then all those five teams will run ragged. Do you not think with Paul George coming no. in, him and Tyrese Maxey? You will don't be think there will be a difference maker in there? No. I've look at look at all the, the the fives on all those teams I've mentioned. Yanis, Cat. Who's the guy from Pacers? That that guy. Tyrese Halliburton. No, no, no. The that centre. Oh, um, Miles Turner. Yeah. Yeah. Who else is there? Well, Paul George is better than a lot of players you've named. Whoa. He's better than Miles Turner. He's he's better than Halliburton. That could go, obviously. That could are go we talking about individual play- players? Or are we talking about the team, the whole team as a collective? Like, I get Paul George, Maxi and whatever, but you've got to factor in the whole team. And if, Joel Embiid is not playing. I do not feel like the Sixers will go to, not even go far. Because you have to pass the Knicks. The Knicks played hard. Yeah, no, no. Don't get me wrong, but I think the 76ers should be involved in that. Mm. Who, who's your, who's your yeah, who's top yours? five in yeah. the East? East. Obviously, you've got Celtics, Knicks, without a doubt. Bucks, 76ers. 
and probably just because they got to the Eastern Conference Finals, the Pacers over the Cavs. No, Orlando. Not yet. I think that was a good te- test for them, though. Don't get me wrong, and I'm not sleeping on. Yeah, I, I think I'm not sleeping on the sleep Magic, on but and my only problem with the Cavs is that I've, they've done this in back-to-back years where I'd expect them to have done better in the postseason or put up more of a fight. Obviously, last season against the Celtics, they had quite a bit of injuries at the time of them meeting up with the Celtics. Yeah. But you also have to, like you factor in MB health, you also have to factor in that the Cavs, they supposedly had, like, some people thought Jared Allen could have played. So there's some internal, not yeah. warfare, but there's mm-hmm. some internal talk there already. There's some sneak this and going on right now. Exactly. And then there've always been, there's been talks of Donovan Mitchell and Garland, Darius Garland, Garland, right? Yeah, yeah I was just thinking in my head how I forgot his name. Like, not them not getting along, but whether they can play together long term, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So when, like, Mitchell re signed, for instance, or et cetera, I was slightly surprised because. I wasn't surprised. People were talking it's going to be one or the other. Yeah, that's where your would he guy. Go? Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, where would he go? <laughs> no, but yeah. Like, that, that's do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. I feel like with Donovan Mitchell, sorry, he, I think he wants to be the star player and. There's nowhere else for him to go at this time. To be the star player. No, yeah. I, I, I heard that. Um, obviously, pundits will be talking about him going to Lakers, but he wouldn't nah, be the main man and all that stuff. Or other teams where he'd be fighting for that um, number one spot. Where is Cavs the Cavs? is where he needs to the be. The Cavs is his team. So, yeah, yeah I think I'm, from my five, will be Celtics, Knicks, Bucks, 76ers, and then the Pacers just ed- edging the Cavs. <laughs> okay, let me give you my five then. Places you have to, they yeah. made the Eastern Conference final. They gave the, I mean, they and gave the books. Like, yeah, ah, they've got a good team. Obviously, in no particular order. Oh, Pacers. The Bucks, sorry, the Bucks oh. got a lot to prove this year. Oh, yeah. They've got a lot to prove. So, yeah, sorry, Gunditch. Pacers, mm-hmm. 76ers, mm-hmm. Bucks, Celtics, Bucks, Celtics, and Knicks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, for me, that that six spot. I'm yeah. I'm sensing heat. If if Butler's hit, hit, hit fit, mm-hmm. then Butler Butler's a cheat code when it comes to crunch yeah. time. Yeah, I'm se- I'm sensing a breakdown. Yeah, in the Cavs. This time, no, in about a few months. So by January, I think there would have been a slight breakdown between so. Garland, Mitchell, and maybe a head coach situation. Who's the head coach again? I think JB Bickerstaff, if I'm not wrong. No, he's gone. He's, he's gone, gone to the Detroit Pistons. Who is that? Oh, he has, because I saw his statement because about um, he doesn't want the Pistons players wearing when no extra the, accessories yeah. and stuff who like that. Who is their coach? Let me see. I can't think. Well, yeah, go on, Dutch. The, the only reason why I say that is because Donovan just re signed this year, isn't mm-hmm. it? And anytime a new coach comes into a player that just re signed this year as well, Sometimes it doesn't always work out, mm. especially in a team that is not in a big market like Cleveland. Mm. So I'm just thinking there might be a breakdown as well. The guy from um, I, I was going to say Kenny Atkinson. Yes. The, was he Nets coach or what? Warriors. He was the assistant coach for Warriors. Yes. Sorry. Mm. Just kidding. <laughs> Kenny Atkinson, yes. Mm-hmm. So I think there might be a breakdown. That's why they didn't put them in the top five. Yeah. He was Nets head coach years ago. Yeah, 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 he was, yeah. Before KD got there. Yeah. Mm. Boy, but I mean, with with the Knicks, with with the addition of Cat. Yes, I, we, I we don't I don't see speak about Cat's Cat getting traded, so it's good you're on uh, Yeah. I don't see how they don't do better than last year, especially getting rid of Julius Randle. It's a it's a better upgrade, I think. I think it's slight. Only slight. What a slight it being an upgrade that like they got rid of him. Yeah, but well, that cat's coming and Randall's gone out. Okay, I mean they needed a, a big anyways because of um, Miles. No, Hartenstein's gone to the Thunder, and yeah. Mitchell Robinson. He's there still, but I think he's injured. He's injured, yeah. So mm. they needed somebody. Um, I don't know about cat, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, think I like, don't know. I, I just, I just think he's a bit more versatile than Randall, and I feel like Randall can only go left. At least yeah. Kat can go left and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. sometimes it's the most basic things that just get you over the edge. Mm. 
I just think. Panic a shoot for his kill. Mm. Yeah. No, he gets. Oh, yeah. Best big man. Big, best big shooting man. So, obviously, with Randall, he just wasn't healthy oh, yeah. for them in the playoffs. <laughs> and injuries caught up with the Knicks mm. in the playoffs. So, um, I think the trade's good for both teams. Yeah. Weirdly, because Di Vincenzo, he, he oh. balled out in the flipping playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's got ants got him <laughs> where and then obviously Julius Randle he can ball out and he doesn't need to be main man etc we saw what the Timberwolves done before we move on to the west but like I think the the Timberwolves win like like a higher grade like I give it like a B mm. I give like well I give I you give, think they won the trade yeah I think they won the trade okay. in my opinion because they got two pieces Instead of just one. But the same time, I feel like... Now, go, why do you think they won the trade? She's not a big fan of Kat. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not big, a big fan of Kat. Oh, fair. I don't think Kat had a great Western Conference Finals, but the playoff run, he did show something. Mm-hmm. And I think that can help elevate his game. And I do think being in New York, he might show some, a bit more. Then again. Well, because you know, fingers you, crossed. You, you know, you, <laughs> New York market. is not a, a, a. The fans are hard, hardcore. But they will support. One thing about Knicks fans. Oh yeah, hardcore, they will. They will support. Yeah, from yeah. the outset, looking in anyway. Um, I just think for Jalen Brunson, that could be a per- not a perfect, but that could be a fantastic deal. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And like, Cat and Randall both got stuff to prove because. I don't think either team wanted to leave where they were. Mm. They're big staples. I was shocked, actually. Yeah, they're mm. big staples within their community. Mm. Like, Julius Randle's big within New York community. Yeah, yeah, Kat, yeah. the same for Minnesota. I think Kat recently launched something just before he got traded mm. there. So I was shocked, yeah. actually. I didn't expect that. When oh. I saw the trade, I was like, bomber. Like, mm. I love a good bomber. Like, mm. I can't say Woj bomb anyway, because Woj... Just I left the scenes, but hey, Shams is carrying it. And I, 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 I miss Woj, I prefer Woj to Shams. <laughs> nah, hey, Shams, do your thing, man. Yeah, Don't yeah. listen to him, man. I think, <laughs> I think it's one of the few, ta- few times that the trade is really good for both teams. Mm. Like, so, but uh, the Knicks, if they're healthy, and obviously Cat's played on the Thibodeau already. Yes. So he knows what to expect. Mm. Yes. We know this coach runs his players into the ground, but yes. at the same time, it either goes two ways. They either, they'll either get injured or they're going to be battle-tested. Mm. Do you think he runs his play to, plays to the ground? In terms of minutes played, mm. Bamba Kla. That's, 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 what the, that's what the players say, isn't it? Yeah. Bamba Kla. Everyone mm. knows, hey, starting three players, you might play 48 minutes in the playoffs. No, Josh, Josh, Josh Hart was played, hey. So, Ten minutes, man. Because they actually caught cool up with them in terms mm. of their health factor. And they do have a good bench, I think, the Knicks do. I like McBride. That comes off the bench, the yes, point guard. and they've got another one that came from the t- 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 LA Clippers. Lamet, Lam, Lamet. <sighs> Ooh, like I know who you're talking about. Good, de- good um, shooter. What, Landry Shamit? Yes. Oh, is, it is, this, is that? Yes. That's how you pronounce his name in it. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's campaign. Right. Cam, campaign as well is on there. No, should, yeah, 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 yeah. They've got a few like, Good players coming off the bench. They they just had a good squad last season. Yeah, so, they did. Um, they did. It's just a shame injuries just losing got to them. Losing Vincenzo yeah. is a bit. Oh, yeah. But he was, he was a bad boy in the playoffs. Mm. <laughs> like, pff, hey, he wants all that smoke. Did mm. you see him and... Um, yeah, preseason was... Woo, him and Jalen Brunson woo. and Rick Brunson arguing during, mm. after the preseason have game. You, have you not noticed this season, preseason, has been like... It's been intense. It's been intense. Yeah. Like mad intense. They, they, they're giving that's us good to see actually because normally they're quite lazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> even last night's game, um, Lakers son. Oh yeah. KD blocking Bronny, and then KD's like, "Yo, that, that wasn't a foul." Like that he was into it and stuff that like was that. A foul. <laughs> it was a little bit of a foul, foul yeah. Foul. But like just things like that is like there's been good matchups mm. or the minutes that players are playing, they're going for it. So maybe. The soft aspect or whatever, or the more relaxed aspect is going to go a bit out of the game yeah. and stuff like that. All right, ne- next question though. Sleeper team of the East for you? Sleeper team? Mm. <sighs> 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 
a team that you think if all goes well they'll be there towards the end of the season or they'll be there in the postseason including teams we've already named in like our top five nah you can't do a top five team that you've named oh orlando then yeah i'd probably be orlando i'll probably go with the magic yeah it'd be a clean sweep for orlando then yeah Oh, my, mine would have been potentially if we were including the top five teams, the Pacers again. Mm. Yeah, that's that's not that's Good definitely not a sleeper. Team, you know? Yeah, but mine they were like my fifth team to because they just need to work on their defense. They score yeah, for fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, they at the top um, of um, ballers. Well, not ballers, but like shooters. Yes. Yeah. Um, like like they like got top good five. players. Like Nimhart's a baller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, boy, I think, hey, I, I just really want, I always say to the boys, I want the East to be as good as the West. The West. Like, that's what I like when good players go to the East again. Like, make, the West was, has been so top heavy over the last couple of years. Like, bro, always, let always. Be, like, I was happy PG went. Yeah. Um, sixes. Let them even it out a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, even Dame go into the yeah. box. Let's make, let's make it even a bit more. Because the gap between... Boston to the rest of the teams roster wise, it was too big mm. compared to like the West. Mm-hmm. You can Where just everyone's say, battling. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah, if there's absolutely. a top team in the West, mm. you can't definitively say. Yeah, yeah, you would just yeah, say yeah, the yeah, Nuggets yeah. for argument's <laughs> sake. But everywhere's close, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. the team will show the Nuggets last year. So, yeah. mate, I. So what do you? So who's our top five in the West? Then so we've done the East. So what would? The top five teams. Top right. five in the West. Let me just go from the top eight where they finish. Thunder, Nuggets, T-Wolves, Clippers, Mavs, Suns, Lakers, Pelicans. Because I feel like this, the West is a bit it's, hard. It's going to change. Bear in mind the Kings, Warriors, mm-hmm. Rockets, Jazz, I won't say Jazz, but Grizzlies, Jazz mm-hmm. back, they mm-hmm. ain't made the playoffs. Spurs, Wemby might be a, a mate, yep. <laughs> a now super that C- alien. Now that CP's there. Yep. So that's almost every team in the West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, go, you go first. Uh, let me go. See, that's why the East was quicker. <laughs> Nuggets. Mm-hmm. Timberwolves. Yep. Nuggets, Timberwolves. Lakers are, are unknown quantity. Golden State unknown quantity. <laughs> mm, sleeper team. Oh, don't pick sleeper team. Is it in, uh, Pelicans. In your five. In your five. Mm. Wow. So okay. you've got the Nuggets, T Wolves, Pelicans. Nuggets, T Wolves, Pelicans. Definitive three. Remember the Thunder finished number one seed. Oh, sorry, Thunder. How, how can I forget that? Mavs got to the M- NBA Finals. It's a mad West, you know. That's West it, Mavs. Okay. Mavs. Mm. So they got Clay Thompson now. Mm. Um, Pelicans. Pelicans, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, Thunder. Nuggets. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put Lakers in there. Mm-hmm. Um, if they don't need the Nuggets, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves. Yep, without a doubt. <laughs> Uh, you got one more, in it? Mm. Oh, have I not mentioned? Yeah, mentioned. You're obviously KD. Suns. Over the Mavs. I, I did pick the Mavs. Did I? You said Thunder Nuggets, T-Wolves, Lakers, Suns. You ain't got the Mavs. You ain't got the Clippers. They might be my sleeper. Who? Mavs. Mavs. Yeah. Only, only reason being is I, this whole Clay Thompson. Mm. I mean... I don't know if he's going to be as good as people say. On paper, he looks amazing. Luca, Kyrie, Clay Thompson. I'm, I'm picking it off of Luca and Kyrie alone. Well, yeah. But in that equation, he's obviously starting five, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. So he he's not come. He, who did he replace again? What's my man's name? Derek Jones. Because Derek yes. Jones went to the Clippers. He's uh, in Miami. Did not go to Miami? I think he went to Clippers. Ah, okay. But uh, yeah, I think Mavs is my sleeper. They might, they might shock. I mean, I could, I could have replaced the Lakers with the Mavs. To me, it's either one of the two f- for me. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> not going, Joe. <laughs> my top five for the West. Uh, I think the top three speeds for itself: Thunder, Nuggets, Six T Wolves. Uh-huh. Um, the Mavs. Yep. If Clay works out, one hundred percent. Yep. Um, Luke has got a taste of what it means. What it feels like. What it feels like. Kyrie's already been there. Yeah. And then they can grow on what they did last season. He seems ultra at peace mm. in Dallas. And then Clay's got something to prove. Absolutely. Um, whether he, obviously he's not the same player he was pre injury, but it's just what capacity they need him in mm. or what they need him to do. Because Derrick Jones was really good for them. Like, all Luca and Kyrie, their defensive players were really good last yeah, season. Which, yeah. like, their in-season acquisitions really helped them. So, um, I think they've only lost Derrick Jones. And then, my fifth team would... Ugh, I'm just biased because of Bran, Bran, Bran. But this, this is just me. This is just a... Or would they be my sleeper? <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. It would have been either one for me. Mavs or Lakers being no, a sleeper but, or in my top five. No, because I've only named four. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's got one more team. Oh, got so I've got more. Thunder Nuggets, Timberwolves, Mavs, and then. Do you know what? This year, I don't think I'll pick the Lakers. Lakers will be my sleeper team. Because we've got to see what it looks like with JJ Reddick as a coach. That's a big, big change. It's too much of an unknown quantity, man. Yeah, but the only, I'd say a pro for the Lakers, which was, I was quite surprised. I think it may be beneficial now is they've kept the exact same starting vibe. Mm-hmm. I think the players can build on that. Like, usually you'd think, all right, like, say, D'Angelo Russell, he was projected to get traded, etc. Yeah. I know. But he actually had a good playoff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, they just ran up against the Nuggets. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. it is. It seems that's the <laughs> kryptonite at the moment. Absolutely. Like, but the Nuggets, remember the Nuggets don't have um, KCP. They don't. They don't. Which is big loss. They got Ross. Big loss. But KCP, and KCP, did I put Orlando Magic as my sleeper? You mm. did. KCP he, is the on. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, but my fifth team in the West, shit. I can't fully pick. Do you know what? Pelicans ain't a bad choice, you know? I, I don't understand the Pelicans. It, uh, Providing. Explain. I think mine, sorry. Scandal free season. <laughs> mine, uh, uh, let me just finish my five. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to them. Um, I think my fifth team's the Kings. Mm. My fifth team's the Kings, and the Lakers are my sleep, sleeper team. The Lakers but, are but remember, eight teams will make playoffs anyway. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Just remember that, guys. Eight teams will make playoffs. We're just we're, doing we're just our doing top five. Our top five. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go Kings. Interesting. Because they, they had a good... I think their record was either one loss... They were the eighth seed. Yeah, but one loss worse than the season before when they were comfortably in the playoffs. Because they were the third seed that yeah, season. Remember, they were the eighth seed. Remember no, that's how Grizzlies good the West was last yeah. season. That their record was basically simultaneous with the year before mm. and they dropped down like three or four yeah. places. I can't remember exactly, but yeah. Obviously, the Grizzlies jars there. Isn't it? Yeah. So. so why haven't we picked the Warriors anymore? As I was going through the list, I was like, mm, I'm not sure what they're going to do. I don't like betting against Steph, but... But Steph to carry the whole team. Who yeah. is on that team? Yeah, that's, yeah that, that's what it is. Draymond Green. Who else is on there? Um, a few suspensions. But, is it what's his name? Body Heat, Body. Body Hill, definitely yep. Body Hill, actually. Is Andrew Wiggins still there? Yep. Yep. I don't see him for that team anymore. Yeah. I just think that they needed to get Steph a big time player. Um, and I thought, well, a lot of people thought it would potentially be Laurie Markinen. It can still happen depending on how the jazz season goes. Yeah. I won't be surprised if it happens during the season. Mm. And that'll be a fantastic pickup. Absolutely. He showed the last couple of years he's an all star. So yeah, it's Do you think it's it's done me, it's done for the Warriors now that I mean the let me, let me the, the dynasty it. is like if they if they don't get some Steph someone this year, hundred percent. Yeah, it's done. Because let me let me read let me read their their roster, yeah. Gary Pay in the second. Jonathan Kaminga, Kyle Anderson, Brandon Polemensky, Reese Beacom. I, I like 
Yeah. Moses Moody, Kevin Looney, well, Kevon Looney, Buddy Hild, <coughs> DeAnthony Melton, Goy Santos, Quinton Post, Andrew Wiggins, Raymond Green, Blake Hinson, Steph Curry, Kevin Knox the second, Trace Jackson Davis, Lindy Waters, Jackson Rowe, and Pat Spencer. At least eight names you named. I don't know. Not be playing. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that definitely included G League players. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I've Trace and Jackson something. He's he was a decent rookie last season. Mm-hmm. Polaminski, if that's how you say his name, he was quite good as well, rookie. Um, and he started a few games as well for them. So they've got good. Podzemski. They've got good young players, like compared to say the players, the good young players that they drafted a couple of years ago that they thought were going to help the current mm. team. Mm. So what's my man's name that they r- traded? Jordan Poole. No. That one, which one? No, Big no, guy. it came after oh, Kaminga. Um, he went to the Pistons. Pistons. Uh, Pistons. I know who you mean, yeah. but I can't remember his Big name. Big guy, but they yeah. thought, he, yeah, I think yeah, he was yeah. like the number third pick in his draft or something like yeah. that. Number three pick, sorry. Um, but yeah, the Warriors, if if they don't get someone for Steph now, deal. it's done. It's 100% over. I mean, I feel like it's done already. It's 100% over. If they don't get someone this season, yeah. it's, it's over. So, season's not. It's the trade deadline, obviously, I think, what, Feb or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, would you like to elaborate on your Pelicans? Yeah, so please. we can come back to the New Orleans Pelicans, please, as to why you have them in your top five. <laughs> All right. If they could remain, yeah. Issy Williamson, yeah? If he can remain scandal-free Zion. and fit, they will be a great Charles squad. Charles Barkley said he's eating up all the food in New Orleans. Apparently the food's crazy there, Mental. though. Yeah. I don't, for him, it's not even scandal. It's just, well, it's, it's just, it's just, that, just that gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Health that and fitness. Gumbo. That's what it is. With, well, it's basically the same thing. Because um, their squad ain't that bad. Who they and they, they have um, Brandon Ingram, McCollum, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, Valentunis, and yeah, then I forgot about this them. This is a pretty solid squad. Is it Herb Jones or Murray? Or? Murray, Dejounte Murray. Shit, he's gone to the Pelicans. Yeah. Ooh, ah. Mm-hmm. How come we didn't even pick Atlant- the Hawks? Yeah, because why? <laughs> yeah, what are we expecting from him? I like I like Trey Young. I really love Trey. Yeah, we we'll, we'll love him. I'm not expecting <laughs> anything. From yeah, nothing at all. So, but yes. nothing that they do is going to surprise us. Mm. Yeah, I don't think they've got. Well, if they win the chip, they would. But yeah. you know, <laughs> I mean, even they happen. got to the Easter Conference Finals years ago. When oh, oh no. them and the Knicks. Ooh. Listen, every year the landscape of the league changes, man. Yeah, it does. You see, if you got to the finals two years ago. <laughs> Well, it you all now? depends on injuries. It all <laughs> depends on injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think the league needs to lower the 82 games, in my opinion. No. Absolutely. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think. Lower it, but to less what games, number? About, about, about 60. No, no, you're buying it. <laughs> 60. Could, usually, I the don't. The season is too long. I don't usually fully agree with the old heads as much, but on that point, I'll agree with them. You've got to play the 82 or near enough that number. What? Charles Barkley and them lot saying that they, they played 82 but, games. But in terms of that, <laughs> like, usually when the old heads speak on the newer generation, I'm like, oh, whatever, etc. But in terms of like the games. It's like, I think I was listening to a clip from Gilbert Arenas. Not that I really take in what he said, but he was talking about, um, he feels like the NBA, it was a decent point. The NBA is punishing players, for instance, like Joel Embiid, that now obviously they've got to play the minimum set of games to get selected for um, all NBA, MVP and all that jazz. And he was saying like, Embiid's 50 games, for, I'm paraphrasing, Embiid's 50 games, could be better than someone's 82 games but because that player played 82 they're gonna get more validation than him in terms of winning actual awards he says now he thinks Embiid's um, capped from winning MVP because he won't be able to play I think is it 65 games Mm. as the is that not due to injuries though yeah yeah yeah. but that's what he's saying like he's saying he shouldn't be punished if he's actually injured but the question is why is he getting so in why is he getting injured all the time I mean there's a lot of players that get injured. I mean, like, yeah, but look help. at look, look at Jason Tatum, for instance. Yeah, but, but what are these guys doing 
with the bodies. And I'm not, obviously, I'm not a professional athlete. I don't know what it <laughs> takes to be a basketball player. But, you know, obviously the league are going to come with with rules and so be it. I hear it, but in terms of like a player's actual... Because, health, sorry, sorry to cut you off. No, you know, when they did this whole loaded management loaded, thing, yeah. obviously Kawhi started that. Well, I don't know, but, I you mean, know. Pop spot. He's, 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 well, he's yeah. the pioneer. I think they put that in place because of, you know, players were just were wanting to sit out just so that they rest their bodies. Mm. And I get what, you know, the old heads are saying, you know, that they should go to 82 games. But I just feel like their bodies are getting so beat up all the time. You know, they're playing in the preseason. They have to play in that that stupid thing that they have to play. Oh, the in-game. In the in-game in season. But that, that counts towards the... That's normal yeah, game. Yeah, but you still it's have to like play. Final and semi-final, that's technically... Yeah, happened. but you, you're you still playing. You're still beating up your body. You know, it's you're still... It's still the same game set of, like, game loads. For me, I think the 65 games as a minimum requirement I actually didn't mind it. I, I was quite a fan of it. It's quite a lot because of like you saying you want it to go down to 60 games for instance that 65 gives the players like all right cool we're gonna have to l do less load management so if we want to get all nba which will effectively help us get max super max contracts we have to play the minimum requirement so my thing is that that 65 games for me it works because you're more or less gonna see the players play if they're not injured <laughs> but do you remember the bu the bubble though Every player played like every player to me was a killer in the bubble because obviously where, where, where no they're gonna way, focus the energy. Well, uh, <laughs> no, but, the, but recover, yeah, but recovery ain't no way time, game. But recovery time, <laughs> they didn't play for four months. Though. No, but recovery time on <laughs> I, their bodies. I can't that I can't equate that one because that that was just a experience. It's like basically having a lockout and that, that, that was like that was like Squid Games yeah. NBA. Like they're not traveling. So what, what, what? The you don't think that, that the bubble wasn't no a I, thing. I'm no, not it counts. The bubble. Oh, okay. I'm saying the players that played out of their skin. T.J. Warren, for instance, man was hitting fifty for fun. He can't get minutes on teams now. Oh my gosh! Do you know what I mean? Whereas Donovan he was Mitchell, in, he was injured after yeah, the bubble. Donovan Mitchell, he he was getting fifty. Oh, he for was fun. a killer. But he's still, Mitchell's been, that it wasn't an anomaly because we knew Mitchell was a baller. TJ Warren just come out of nowhere and just <laughs> 50s. He's beefing Jimmy Butler. And then we're like, rah, can you really, really The bubble was a up? time. It was a time, but was just for time. me, like, I can't, the bubble can't equate in terms of how players looked because the they bubble had. don't equate. They had that time off. Yeah, but I won't, I'll yeah, never they had the time. The yeah, and me neither. But the bubble was a time because no one, I mean, people were injured, but it, everyone looked healthy. Yeah, yeah. But and that's how I want the, the season to look, every one being no, healthy. You can't do that, man. But every, again, every, they all had And then it's a harder off. time to, I don't, want, I don't want Boston to win. I just, I just don't want them to win. I just want a team. Teams to be healthy so that we can beat Boston and just. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to win, but did we do our sleeper teams for the West? No. Uh, I, I did. I did. Mine, mine was the Lakers. What was yours? I don't know if you did. How come both of you didn't pick the Suns, by the way? Just, I just want to know. Because, like, no, as, as you said, innit, we picked five I teams. think the Suns have got Suns gotten will a lot make, better. Suns will make playoffs, but. I don't know why I'm expecting like a... Even then it's tight. <laughs> I'm expecting a, a fall off at some point. I just think the Suns, getting them like... I like Bradley Bill a lot, but I think the trade was so pointless. Yeah, I think he should come off the bench now. I leave CP on the, on the floor. Who? CP. What's CP? No, CP's a... Spurs. Spurs now. So they have a. You're uh, thinking Suns four yeah, years, yeah. three, four the, years ago. So the Suns now have I'm a point guard. Mad. Now, Tyra is it Tyrus? Tyrus Jones? Tyrus. The one Tyrus, that was um, he was with the Grizzlies a couple years ago. He's he was uh, the, they traded him from um, the Wizards. Yes, because it was a couple years ago when Jar would sit. The Grizzlies still had a great record when he was coming in. Tyus Jones, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's leads, a very good point guard. And he leads the uh, NBA in assists, mm. by the way. 
not saying that will make any difference yeah, or like, whatever, but the fact that they I have that they now dispersed, have man. they now if have interesting. they now have a point guard which is what they needed. Yeah, but like my thing is one, is he gonna start who? Tyler Jones. He has been starting. No all right then, so are you starting him alongside Bill Booker and K D? I think that's what Mike, whatever his name is, has been doing. So that's what they've in the been preseason. Doing in pre-season. Yeah, I've yeah. not, I've not really kept up with the Suns. And they have Plumlee as well. Yeah, but like, KD, what? So Booker's your three, KD's your four. Like, you don't want KD to be playing the four a lot. You want him to be playing the four here and there. Mm, he's like, really a three. Whereas, really. like, Giannis and LeBron, they've got. No, they're just a bit more stronger to mm-hmm. withhold it to play the four yeah, longer. Yeah, yeah. Even LeBron, I don't like him playing the four too, like, too much. Too much. I like the balance, but he can play center as well. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then Giannis is he's a power forward. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, and then if Booker's coming up against, I by the way, Booker went for, for the Olympics. Booker grew, he grew in my eyes. Like that, that's <laughs> he's a bit my guy now. You get me? Obviously, mm-hmm. we were saying. Mitchell, but I book is my guy still. Like he showed he can play real defense, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And there's been talks of Booker being his defensive ability, but we didn't really see it on show last year. When this time last year, when I think um Kyle Kuzma tweeted saying who's going to be that player for Team USA, Booker retweet quote, quote tweeted saying yeah. I'll be that guy, and yeah. then he backed it up this yeah. Olympic he so did, it's he like. Did, he did. People my, sleep on Booker. Yeah, if my thing is like oh, he's, he's a good he's, player, he's man. A good player, man. If Bradley Bill wasn't there. It's weird. He's a he's a great player, but if he wasn't there, fit wise, I'd have a bit more faith in the Suns. Because uh, again, the NBA, especially with the five, it's more about like the actual cohesion, isn't it? Yeah, mm. the whole team in it. Yeah, so it's not about star power. Yeah. So that that was my reason for not picking the Suns. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can I, I could see that. I like, KD see that. was great last year. Booker was <laughs> great, but mm-hmm. it's just like it's just, KD's greatness is kind of like LeBron now. No matter how great they are. It's not going to be as effective mm-hmm. as five to ten years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Their greatness is capped yeah. because of they're not as agile on both ends. For mm-hmm. instance, yeah. they can still put up the numbers. Yeah, but it's is it going to be not the same kind of way yeah, they used to put yeah, up the numbers? Yeah. Exactly. So um, the I don't know, man. I don't know with the Suns. I just think, and they're kind of capped with Bradley Bill's. Well, they are capped with his contract. Uh, if they were going to trade a player. Ever? It will have to be Booker or KD, and you're just not going to do that. No. So How many years has he got left? Uh, KD? Bill. No idea. Like four. But I know KD has Three two. Or Three or four? Mm. I know KD's got two. Bradley Bill's money's going up, bro. <laughs> so, mm. yeah. That's mental. He's got, like, the one of the best uh, NBA contracts. Yeah. I don't know how he did it, but... He was the star man at the Wizards yeah, when they had was. nothing. Yeah, at that yeah, point, true. John Wall had left. Mm. Like, so... Based but the project. type of contract, what yeah. he has, he can go basically anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere that he wants to go. Mm. Yeah. Mental. He's getting, he's getting a cash dollar. So oh. I just think the Suns, they're, because of Bill's contract, they're capped in terms of the players that they can bring, role yeah. players that they can bring yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a shame. Yeah. For them, they don't necessarily need a shooter, for instance. If they didn't have Bill when they brought in a real defensive player, mm-hmm. even if the player couldn't score. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that might be a bit better, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. I do like the, the rookie this year, uh, Ryan Dunn. Mm. Really good. Yeah. Really, really good. Well, this season. I mean, yeah. The, I've, it, got, I've got another question for you guys then. Go on then. Who's going to be your MVP this season? By the way, before we go back, go to that, the Grizzlies, do not sleep on the Grizzlies. No. Jar's coming back with a vengeance. No guns, but vengeance. Yeah, but who's on the Grizzlies now? <laughs> I don't really feel like they lost a lot of pieces. I might be wrong. But like, I think they did. Oh, you might. I think they did. God, they, they had a solid defensive team. They got rid of, um. is it Steve? Uh, no, he no, he was OKC. What, Steven Adams? Yeah, Steven Adams. And he was injured last season. He's mm. back. He, well, he will be back. Yeah, OKC is a good team. We time. haven't spoke about them. Before you ask your question, we're going to speak about the Thunder. Because right. I think they can replicate mm. being the one seed. They traded Josh Giddy. Yes. Or Alex Caruso. Mm. He's the oldest player on their team, on, and he's 30 years old. Damn. <laughs> and they got Hartenstein from the Knicks. He defense, though. Who, Hartenstein? No, Alex. Caruso. Yeah, Caruso. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. a bad boy. And then Hartenstein, 
defense as well. Yeah, Another yeah. big man, and I think that will help. What's Lanky guy's name again? Their center. Um, Chet. 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 Yes. Chet Holmgren. Oh, I forgot about him. Like. That's beneficial to Chet. Mm. Chet's not going to have to take the hits from the other big centers as much. Yeah. Uh, we saw what happened, Stan, done for the Knicks in the mm. playoffs. Mm. And, and he got paid, I think, three years, 89 million, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, boy, even if he's not starting, he's going to get key minutes where Chet can either rest or even sometimes play the four and stretch it even more. Mm. Like the OKC... Shea was their oldest player, I believe, last season, or someone from the bench, and then Shea. Mental. And we saw Shea was an MVP candidate. Wow. Might not have to do as much. Mm. And then Caruso, real defense. Like, the Lakers miss him. Yeah. <laughs> real defense. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, the Thunder, for me, I won't I be su- there. They're, they're up there. I won't be surprised if they make the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. They at the to. least. Yeah, at the least. And that's what they should be really aiming for. Yeah. But then again, mm. we briefly touched upon the T-Wolves earlier. They might be the team to beat in the West. Because mm-hmm. I don't know how much the Nuggets losing KCP. Yeah. They felt it losing Bruce Brown. Because yeah, Bruce Brown yeah. was massive off yeah, the bench was, two years was, in the championship side. Yeah. They didn't really have that um, bench impetus last season. Mm. As great as Jokic was. And then... Murray, you just don't know if he can mm. do it for the whole season. He, yeah. he steps up in the playoffs, mm-hmm. but... It wasn't the same as the year before, unless he sees a Lakers yeah, jersey. And then... got, I'm not saying Russell Westbrook would make a difference, but you know, they've got Aaron Garden, they've got yeah, yeah, they've got what's his name, Parter, Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, I shout out him, man. He went through hell last yeah. season with his family stuff, mm. like and Aaron Garden as well. He did, didn't? Mm-hmm. Yeah, was it someone passed away? His, his brother, family? yeah. And then Michael Porter Jr. had his one of his brothers pass away, and then another one permanently suspended. Yeah. From gambling. Gambling. Yeah. yeah. Like mental in it. Yeah. And Porter Jr. That was going on. All that saga all was the coming time, out. Yeah. yeah. During the Lakers yes, series, yeah, yeah. and he was unreal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he yeah. was the difference maker in that series, and obviously Jamal Murray made the shots. Um, Jokic is Jokic, but yeah. <laughs> Jokic going to be Jokic. Yeah. So, so are we going back to the question of who's going to be MVP? Go on. Sorry, yes. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I just had to shout out the Thunder. 2024, 2025 MVP. Should I go first? Go on then. Go on. Jokic. 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 Yep. I think Jokic might get vote, voters fatigue because he's won it three, three in the last four years now. Um, that's, that's how Embiid won it. What do you mean? What could? What was fatigue? What, from Jokic? Mm. To an extent. But I think Embiid deserved to win it. I, like, when Embiid was crying... Off of that last stretch. When Embiid was crying all the years before, I didn't think he <laughs> deserved it. That year he won it, I thought he did. And if he weren't injured last season, I think he would have won it again. Because he was on 35 points a game before he got injured. <laughs> so, yeah, my MVP... That's, that's, that's how Giannis took one from Harden, voters fatigue. Yeah, I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I slightly think Harden got robbed. Yeah, that yeah, Harden was he was insane. Um, oh, go on, Joe. <laughs> my MVP this season. You know what? I'm gonna go. It's out of two guys, Jason Tatum and Ant Edwards. You just don't like the Celtics. Over. Over Jokic. Yeah. I just, on, that, on how dominant he is. That voter's fatigue is real. It's real because LeBron got capped at four. Yeah. <laughs> True. They were, they were, and you know, you know Americans, yeah, they love a storyline. Yeah. So if that storyline just so attractive at the time, it does the stats kind of don't almost don't matter. Yeah. That storyline's gonna tip it over the edge for him. Like maybe. I just think if Jason Tatum's like how he was maybe two years ago, or you can see a bigger gap between him and Brown, because the, the gap is very close. Like they're close in ability. Tatum's better overall. But if he opens up the gap between them two internally, or he shows, like, it's really his team revenge season <laughs> in that sense. If it doesn't cause internal warfare, Tatum's up there. And then, and Edwards, if he takes his game to another level. Um, I think because and, and so liked, that's my only thing. I think he, he was slightly overrated as much as I, I love his game. 
I think he was slightly overrated when, and I I, I was a prisoner of the moment because f- when we were we were last on, I might have had him as the two, best two way player. I had him in the top two, and then when I reflected on it in his position anyway, I was like, no, he he's not better than I don't think. I might have had him ahead of Jalen Brown, but when I did it, he's not better two way player than Jalen Brown mm-hmm. yet or other players. There was one or two other players. So I was a prisoner in the moment. But, and, <laughs> but he's got the whole charisma, everything in it. But I think he can, he can win MVP this year because he's so liked. That's my thing with that. So. I mean, it's not... Okay, I, I've got like a top three. Well, I'm going to say five, but five will be... A well, for bit MVP. Of a, yeah, a bit of a stretch. So... Five, so wait, what... Um, what? No, it's a bit of a stretch. To, cause I she's, trying to do her, she's trying to do her own start in five. Yeah, because it's a MVP. bit of a... Yeah, because it, it could be... To, for me, it could be anybody in that start in five, but the three, you can't really deny. Like, Jokic, uh, Tatum, and Joel Embiid. Those three for me. And then whoever... I think of Embiid. I just don't know if he's going to play enough games. Well, that, there you go. But we'll see. His statement on the back-to-backs, and that's partly why I think the Clippers, not Clippers, the Sixers can still be good because as long as Paul George is healthy, I think him and Tyrese Maxey can do enough of a carry job. And if Embiid's not playing back-to-backs, mm. do you know what I mean? The Sixers over the years they've generally had a good overall roster. Yes, they like are. you've seen it, Batum was making big shots in the playoffs, mm. all that kind of. Obviously, I don't think he's there anymore. But as long as their roster construction is fine, yeah. Kelly Oubre he slightly bored last yeah. season. So Sixers, if the Paul George, yeah, if Paul George, George is healthy game. enough, mm. when Embiid sits particular games, I think they'll still do damage. But that's the only reason why I don't have Embiid mm. in it. All right, let me let me. Now, these ain't your common MVP nominees. Mm-hmm. But I do think this season, maybe one of them will be on the radar of MVP. Jalen Brown, if he manages to continue this... Hold on, should we do sleeper MVP? Are you, is, are you doing your MVPs? So you think Jalen yeah, Brown yeah. is your... Okay. Yeah, I actually think Jalen Brown. Hmm, fair. If he can build off because if he if he builds off what what happens, he's got eyes on him now. Yeah, and it's the right amount of eyes that will get him MVP. I really want Shay to win MVP. Mm-hmm. He's just a smooth criminal. Shay was man. close for me. He's a smooth criminal. Yeah, and Greek freak. Giannis mm. back with a bang. Mm. I just think with Giannis, yeah. As great as he is, and he's easily, he's top three. Him, Jokic, Luka, whatever order anyone wants to do it in. I think he was lucky to uh, win that trip. Huh? You think he was lucky? Yeah. I mean, took off my guy. I'm, do you know what? I'm not disputing that. I'll I'm not know. saying he's a bad player, by the way. Like, he is a, a, no, no, M- a MVP, great... No, no, MVP, the best in the league. Like, <laughs> yeah. Giannis is, is that guy, but they got lucky. Oh, I think. Oh, Nets. It's nothing to do with no, no. they did. No, they did. They did. It makes sense. It's the KD thing. No, no, they did, but they, they won it anyway. Yeah, they so. won it. Yeah, cool. No, but I don't think he'll win it again. My thing is, I just feel like he slightly missed his window of opportunity to win another championship. With like, I feel like, say, before Dane came, they had the Bucks had another real chance, for instance. Oh, with um, Drew Holiday. Yeah, to go back to back mm. and all that kind of stuff. And I just feel like the the East has got a better one over the last couple of years. And if we expect it to be what it is this year, and then I just don't want Boston. I just the Bucks have had a, <laughs> the Bucks. Their players get injured quite a bit now. Yeah, they do. Like Chris Middleton. Chris not Middleton the same is not the same. And you need him to be in that championship. You do room. absolutely. So I just feel like there might be a killer trade coming. So it's like watching watching um, Giannis in the Olympics. There's only so much he could do. He was so good in the Olympics. No, but like he was actually <laughs> sick. But he, Greece had nothing else. And yeah. obviously, like you've got that's all he does, though. Like he gets the ball, dunks the ball, gets the ball. I mean, I mean he's he's good at it. As long as it goes in the basket, dunks the ball. Style points. That's oh. a bonus mm. for me. As long as you win, I like efficiency, you know. Yeah. And I just don't know how much Dane can really, really help him. Let's hope he's settled now. What do you mean by 
how them can really, really help them. Are you talking about like their, I don't know, their personalities gelling or what? what is it that you feel that they can't take it there? My like, thing is, like, like when they got traded there, we were all, I was super excited, in it? Yeah. But like, obviously, it's just one year, in it? But that one year, and then alone, plus obviously Dan were going through his, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, his stuff. stuff. Yeah, no, which you take into account. You even see it a lot within the start and vibe documentary. Like I've always known what, I, not always known, but like say the athletes around me, and I take into account more personal things athletes Absolutely. go through yeah, yeah. rather than like say most viewers or fans in it because you, I know they're human. Mm. <laughs> they're superhuman, but they're human. And yeah. you saw it with. Tatum, even his mum and son not being available mm. until half time yeah. at the Lakers Christmas game. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. much his game changed once yeah. they turn up Jimmy Butler, his um, dad yeah. dying and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But in terms of Giannis and Dame, it's not a. I think chemistry wise, I think they get on really well because they're both they are big superstars. They don't like the line like crazy. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I just think the whole. I think there's only so much they can do as a duo because I don't think the Bucks team overall is as good. Like Middleton's not not as good yeah. health injuries wise, and Giannis not having Drew there to lock up a uh, point guard is crazy. That's a fair assessment. I think Drew not being able, not even a point guard, guards. Drew, I was about to say because Dame is the guard, uh, point guard. Yeah, yeah, but Dame's not the defender Drew Drew was. Mm. Like with say Drew Giannis and Middleton. Giannis had his second scorer in middle one. Mm-hmm. He could go off for 30 and that or just average 20. Yeah. And then he could still be that elite defender. And then he knows that <laughs> Drew's there. Then they had Brooke Lopez just... Mm. Brooke's older mm-hmm. now. Even Dame as well. I don't know if he can be any better than he was at his Portland years. I think he's, what, he's 33 or... No, Dame. Yeah, I think he's 33. 33 or 34. Yeah, Something 33, like that. yeah, yeah. So it's just like... You I don't know where if if there is gonna be another tra- trade for the books. You don't know where it's gonna come. I don't from. know yeah, where it's gonna 34. come. Is it thirty four? Yeah, I don't know where it, it's gonna come from, <clears throat> and what team, like where where we put like Dame's getting older. Like, you know where would you put Dame? if it is Dame? Like where would you put Dame? I mean. Is anyone really gonna? Uh, is the books really gonna trade Yanis? Uh, yeah. no. no, like pre this year. Yanis is Milwaukee. Yeah, absolutely. Pre this year, the last four years, for instance, everyone would have the Bucks in their top two in the East mm-hmm. easily. Yeah. Whereas people, you can put them now, but it's just like, are they really better than the Knicks right now? No. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, are they really better than seventy sixes? And these are things that. Like that year that the Celtics knocked them out a couple years ago, I felt like that was the Bucks' year to go back to back. But if you had to do it that year, if Giannis puts the team on his back, then you know. Mm. But we've seen the last two playoffs, Giannis has got injured in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, this year, was it this year? Last when, year. Well, yeah, this year. So this year yeah, he was yeah. injured as well. Mm-hmm. Last year he was injured when the Heat knocked them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy Butler cooked Drew Holiday, but there was no one there. That's when the Heat went on the. They went to the NBA yeah, finals as the eight the finals, yeah. Like, it's just the best players or the key players. Like, have you reached your peak, or is health things starting to catch up with you? Obviously, Giannis is still quite young, but he's actually got injured mm. in the postseason the last yeah. two years. Yeah. So there's only so much. Like, the Bucks aren't a definitive top two, top three team for me in the East no. anymore. Like those days, they're in the fire because obviously yeah, there's yeah. nothing else there. Cause, and because you're honest, is there? Do you know mm. what I mean? And Dame, respectfully, yeah. do you know what I mean? Dame but it's just that connect. They really need to connect. Yeah. And that that's just because that's why I asked you about the connection. Yeah. Like, I think them aspect, as people. Yeah. I think they get on superb. <laughs> but I yeah on the car. I, sometimes I don't see it as much because I I do feel like. Um, Yanis is very like he always wants the ball. I, I, that's what I feel like. He doesn't pass the ball hmm. as much. I don't. I mean, I have been watching a few books. Yeah, no, I hear it. But I, I just don't feel like he was, you know, passing the ball to Dame or Dame was. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't cohesive. It wasn't cohesive. I, it I, was. 
it was just all over the place. I just think it was them trying to figure it out. More. Yeah, yeah. I, I think mean, every all of them were trying to figure there it is, out. There is a lot of times where you can see Giannis wants to get Dame into the game. He mm. not he wants Dame to take that last shot. Yeah. I think he even said oh, something yeah, along yeah, those lines yeah, last yeah, season. Yeah, like he won't mind, like giving the ball up to mm. him in key moments because he's not a shooter like that. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But at the same time, and I think they've already established it that. Dame's already established Giannis is the better player. They need Giannis to be an uh, MVP candidate yeah. and then Dame to be at his level. Obviously, he's going to be capped because Dame's not number one. Yeah. But he still needs to be supremely high. Absolutely. Isn't it? So and he can be. He can, 100%. He, he definitely so can they, be. They, got, they, got, they have a potential to have a one-two punch that will surprise a lot of people. Mm. Whether or not they can put it together is another thing. My thing is, yeah, sorry, I've kept going on. Like A lot of these players... The best players in the NBA, for instance, they're either mid mid thirties. As much as we love them, there's only so much they can do. Yeah. Because when they get injuries now, you actually kind of feel it. Yeah. Like LeBron, obviously LeBron's LeBron. KD, them man, they can't play more than they probably did last season because they were all NBAs. But seventy years, if they get injured now, you might think, how long are they actually out for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Dame's come into that category now. He's 34. Mm. Jimmy Butler, we really started to see it last season. Mm. He's 34 as well. Injuries yeah. actually caught up mm. with him a, a mm. bit. It's just whether how many years have you got to turn it back on yeah. to your elite yeah. level? And it's, if, so if the what? Celtics are healthy whilst everyone else is stumble, stumble, so they'll walk through the East again. We're yeah. in for a wild ride, man, this season. At We're the Celtics run, the teams that they faced, they had the perfect run. But you can't fault it. It's no, not their fault. Not their fault. Oh, yeah. They got their job done. They were able to rest players. Yeah, but we don't want them to win I again, it, guys. <laughs> I, for me, the Celtics, I've warmed to them more because I actually like their players. I like yeah, their I, 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 Yeah, I like them I really too, like but I just, stuff, so. I just don't. want them to win. You just don't like the brand. Who's, who's going to be an Eastern Conference uh, finalist? Uh, easily Celtics again. Yeah, Celtics. And? As long as Brown and Tatum are healthy. Um, probably Knicks. Yeah. That would have been my two. Is that your two? Who have we missed out? Pacers, Bucks. I think Knicks, me. No, I did. Uh, 76ers. Yeah, until, I would say 76ers, but until Embiid actually gets to the Eastern Conference Finals, I can't give him that credit. Yeah. Mm. You can win your MVP. You need to actually make at least one Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Didn't, didn't he do it against um, nope. Toronto? That was second round when Kawhi made that shot. Let's speak about starting five. Starting five. What a series. Because as you guys should know, starting five series on Netflix Mm -hmm. about five, well, five starters that are in the NBA right now. Top, yeah. The the top top of the top. Top players in their teams, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have Anthony Edwards, LeBron James. You say LeBron's name first next time. (laughs) You see where his allegiance is, Elias. What's his first name? Demontis? Demontis. Sabonis. But his family called him Domas. Yes, Domas. Ah, Domas Sobonas. Yes, Domas Sobonas. Um, and... Jason Tatum. Yeah, oh, yeah, JT. And mm-hmm. then Jimmy Butler. Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. Butler. Jimmy Buckets, a.k.a. the coffee maker. Coffee guy. <laughs> a.k.a. the... Uh, what's the... When he came in the long hair. Oh, my <laughs> I, Emo Jimmy. That was interesting, though. Not, not him doing it. On the series, mm. like the explanation of it mm. and stuff like that, I was like, "All right, cool." It's still enough for me. Oh yeah, yeah. No, don't get me wrong. It was. It I guess was enough from everyone. You see Bam's reaction when he saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was mad still. <laughs> but then him following up, being in a that artist video and everything, and all that. Mm. I was like, "Oh yeah, him." Was it asking the nanny, what should I do? And the nanny's yeah, like, being yeah. emo. <laughs> He's like, "Effort." <laughs> Let me play with the media in it. Yeah, so I was like, yeah. "Obviously, you do your thing, do what you want in it." But mm. yeah, starting five. I would say I'm, I'm only one episode in. Yeah. I'm loving it so far. Yeah, we're well done with it. Yeah, we're I think done. I'm, I'm at the end of I, the final I, episode. I, I think I've, I've, I've watched it all. So what's, 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 your, what's your thoughts on the overall production of it? Um, so a few things th- that I took away from it. Um, Anthony Edwards, mm. um, he's very young. Yeah. Like very, very young, like he's still childish. He acknowledges it though. Yeah, he does acknowledge but he's childish. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> he's obviously his personality is A one. Um sorry, just to cut you off. It's weird though, as childish as he is, he know when it comes to basketball, he knows how oh, to he switch switched it on. on. Absolutely. 
he's his childishness in his personal aspect doesn't translate to the yeah. basketball which is great yeah that's why I, I like him even more yeah 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 I absolutely he love him he enjoys his age if yeah. that makes sense yeah 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 I yeah um, and also he doesn't eat very well yeah he, but he spoke about like, yeah, he'd, better nutrition and stuff like yeah that. like literally he went out for a run or he was working out or whatever he came back and ate domino pizza like, like I, about his nutrition. I, I, yeah <laughs> literally speaking about how he eats oh, he's what 22 isn't yeah it? 22 like, I mean we he, he fried chicken yeah. he was like what you know, do you I'm expect I'm trying to like get my palate you know that's what you were saying you know my, my taste buds are you know, are not well, like now, yeah. experienced. So he's like obviously yeah. still eating fried chicken and all sorts and whatever. Um I'm Jason fried chicken though. I know. Mm-hmm. Jason Tatum, um, I mean for me, he he's a lovely guy. Um, but when his dad spoke about, you know, seeing the beast seeing Jason Tatum in the beast mode that he wants to see him in. Um, but then obviously when they won the chip then the reporters was like, well, we don't need to see that beast mode in, you know, mm. Jason Tatum because his personality actually got him to where, you know, where he, he, flipped, he flipped the scripts. Basically. Absolutely, yeah. and 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 you know, I, it was really interesting to see that because I have been talking about that with friends about like not seeing like that enough. that enough of of, of Jason Tatum, Wait, but. You- do you know what it is with Tatum? It's because he loves Kobe so much. You'd think he'd have more of a Kobe personality. That's what it is. And they're, they're not point. opposites, but like they're so different. Very. Like, but that's a good point. You'd though. think he'd, because he, Kobe's his number mm. one, you'd think he would have inherited Kobe's the Kobe like, mentality. mentality, Mamba spirit, Mamba yeah, mentality, Mamba, yeah. all that jazz. And he's got it in a quiet way where he's just focused. Mm. And he just does his thing quietly. Yeah. Like, He's not on. He's not on the assassin mode of Kobe, mm. but just. Whereas, like most players that idolize a player, they kind of want to be like them personality wise. You do you know, know what I mean? De- uh, Devin Booker. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Those players that like really look up to Kobe, to Kobe. You, you obviously see that beast mode in them. But it was really interesting to see that he da- his dad said that. You know that was really interesting to see. Also, LeBron, just seeing that family aspect for yeah. me. Uh, with LeBron, I mean, he's always been like a family man, but yeah. just seeing it was really, like, really I th- good. I think his was key from the family aspect because you can see how much he appreciates Savannah or what she does, absolutely, and what she, like how much she appreciates him. But they're so in sync, mm. like she knows. All right, let me hold it down, mm. and he knows. Like he's got it the best way possible. An athlete can have it mm-hmm. with your other half because. And his family understand it. Mm-hmm. I always say to the man them that Kip Wolves, like sleep is so important. And he's one athlete that's always preach, I need my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, even if you're having late nights, but he sleeps during the day every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it showed in documentaries that <laughs> 12 till 2 is his sleep schedule. Mm-hmm. Without fail, no matter what he's doing, if it's an off day or even mm-hmm. in game day, mm-hmm. he's sleeping rough. Oh, really? He says recovery is the best thing for him. Mm. Like sleep's his best form of recovery. Mm. Sorry, so fair, fair, fair. But, and then obviously having all the funds in the world to get. Mm. Yeah, listen, he can he can pay someone to put him to sleep, yeah. and it still be fine. He ain't gonna he's feel had, nothing. He's had the same trainer since. Same since. trainer, but then they talked about like um, how much he spends on um, his yeah. body. It's like, like a million, isn't it? Well, he said no comment. He said no comment. He said he doesn't know where that narrative came yeah. from. Because mm. he's never put, he never put that out himself. Yeah. But he obviously spends. A well, lot you of can it. see like how much he puts the work that he puts into making his sure routine. that his body is in, you know, top top. This is why I season. feel like some of the players that went to the Olympics, that was their opportunity for mm. them to go to the next step. Mm. Seeing him, Steph, KD in person, seeing mm. what them three do, like mm. to be where they are, because mm. they're insane trainers, mm. like. LeBron gets more of the credit, but we know KD works just as hard. KD and LeBron used to train together every offseason. Yeah. Like, Steph, to see his development from preventing ankle injuries, for instance. Mm. Like, Steph's, I always say Steph's arguably the fittest player in the NBA on the court mm. because of the running he does. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, like, the likes, Devin Booker, for instance, he's, he's around KD, so he can naturally take that next step. Mm-hmm. But and being around the MP, like, because 
it humbled him to an extent. Mm-hmm. I'm not the main man in the Olympics, mm-hmm. but he's got the man mindset. Mm-hmm. And then Embiid's the flip for me where he's not meant to be like those guys, but that could help him, his career, being around those guys, even if it was for six weeks or however long it was. Do you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, sorry. Other players in the starting five. Um, so LeBron Sabonis was really good to see. The family aspect, obviously. Yeah. Um, that was really good because obviously we know that his dad played in Mm. the NBA but then he talked about like just comparing lives of not being away from his family and he now understands what he his dad went through Mm. yeah um you know being because he towards the end he basically said I've probably get exactly what my dad yeah like (laughs) yeah so um yeah I I think everyone should watch it it's really Jimmy really oh yeah Jimmy you know, Jimmy's Jimmy, mm. um, but for him to obviously, we now I understand why we didn't really see that beast mode during the playoffs. Mm. The, like, obviously, this season, obviously because of his dad, you know, passed passed away. Well, you no, know, he got injured in the playing, so his dad passed away during the season. Yeah, but then obviously, yeah. you know, I don't know, but we didn't see the he got same Jimmy. In the, Kelly Uber in this playing game. Yeah, but for me, we didn't see the same the same Jimmy what we see in the playoffs. Yeah. It was totally different, in my opinion. I think, like, the period when his dad died in the regular season, because the Heat was still trying to... And I think they weren't going on long runs, mm. and that probably affected it. Yeah. Because he played that same day when... His dad... Well, his dad was like... Um, He's, he's he played so he's I think his agent called him and said on the plane, no on the plane him. yeah and texted him and said um you know his dad uh, no no so basically sorry I remember now um before he was flying he basically said to the hospital staff How make make sure he's available he knew his dad was gonna die yeah but he said make sure he's fine to watch my game and that he's he's alive by the time I come back because it was playing and come back and then. His agent texted him on the plane, and he said from that point, his agent never texts him, or no one texts him when he's mid-flight. Have you and landed? he said, yeah, all his agent said is, have you landed? And yeah. he knew at that point his dad had passed yeah. away. And he still went out on the floor and balled. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what game it was, but... But it wasn't, it's, to me, it still wasn't the same old yeah, Jimmy that I we know, see. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because towards the end, you see him really say... When he says, I don't even like, want the cameras being on me. Like, mm. I'm just here. And you don't are filming me. Yeah. And you can see how, like, his dad's death affected the rest of his season. Yeah. Because um, I don't know if you know about, like, his, like, growing up. He didn't, I, didn't, I don't think he had both parents in his it, life. I don't think him and his dad had a great relationship. Yeah, because he was raised by someone else. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it was a, obviously, if you've seen quarterback and if you've seen receiver, Mm. You kind of see that kind of style, yeah. Because Peyton Manning's one of the executive producers, and obviously, he's oh, yeah, he was ex- ex- executive producer at um, both the NFL series. So, if you like those kind of docu series, and me and Jacob spoke about it on last week's episode, um, how sports documentaries is helping to get um, a fan, fans of or fans that aren't really interested in those sports, for instance. Perfect example, you have to survive. Yeah, we basically spoke about that without you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah it's good, unless you watched it, which you should have. But um, just saying, I was saying on that episode that all these kind of sports docu- docuseries, like, especially these particular ones, mm-hmm. I know, for instance, my sister, I can always say, yo, you will love this. And she'll verify that she's loved it, etc. So, no, starting five, for me, it was, obviously, we given a bit but you will continue watching it mm. um it just further highlights everything that players really go through with it it shows you how long a season is you know? <laughs> it's even long man but how it can just cut off when the lakers got knocked out by the nuggets lebron's just like we do all this for nine months and you're telling me my season's done mm. like, boom you're just packing everything mm. <laughs> and it's hard for players like that to switch off yeah do you know what i mean but it's so ingrained in having a postseason, man. Yeah. So, how do you feel about um, LeBron potentially retiring soon? It's gonna be a sad day. It's, m- it's gonna be day. crazy, but see, this year, twenty twenty four, has been the year of the crazy things happening. So, now real talk. Obviously, touch with nothing bad happens like that, but yeah, for um, real. Just Bronny coming. 
just need to briefly touch up on LeBron and Bronny. Like the preseason game, them two playing together, when they actually get minutes on the floor, they've created the ultimate history in sports. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because we've seen like father ultimate and sons Nicole, potentially baby. playing different sports at the same time, but you played with your son. With your son. At the same, yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts. So it's like when that happens, everyone. Everyone knows that Lakers game, or the next couple Lakers games, for instance. It's going to be sellout. The viewership's going to be high. I won't be surprised if Bronny jerseys sell out for fun, even uh, they'll get hardly get any minutes and stuff like that. And to get a LeBron jersey before he goes, though. Yeah, I need, I want to see LeBron before he retires. Yeah, shit, I'll be mad. Bron, Bron. But yeah, now starting five, for those that haven't watched it. Yeah, must go. watch. Go and watch, even though the season would, would have started when this comes out, go yeah. and watch it. Like, it helps, it helps in terms of how... Just understanding players as human beings and just people, mm. like, they, they, you know, they, they, they're like us, obviously, you know. Mm. They, they cry, they have emotions, they, they go through things, that, you know, they deal with, like, things like what we go through as average people, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, yeah, it's a must, a must watch. Even if you're not even a basketball fan, like just watch, just you watch it. Enjoy it, like because I think the general non-sports viewer get gets to really understand what an athlete goes through mm. a lot of the time, mm. or what they think. Just because they're, especially the elite people, just think, oh, because they're earning a certain amount, etc. They should be happy where they are. First of all, they're super all, all elite athletes. They're superhuman to an extent. Mm. They've worked their bloody socks off to get where they are. Like, they're not just going to get there of natural yeah, ability. Absolutely. They've got the natural ability, but you need more in it. Mm. That's slightly why I had the Kings making mm. in my fifth spot. I, I think Sabonis can potentially, you know, him and Deepak. I see, I see. I'm hoping for another season of it or another, like, Mm. Another different start in five, you know. Awesome. But how, how, how do you how do you retain viewership after having that kind of start in five? I think if you change the people, I mean, I don't want to see the same people again. Yeah, you definitely won't. <coughs> like I, I kind of. Who do you want to see next, that. though? Um, I would want to see I Dame. Don't know if I've got a starting five, or maybe two or three. I think I want to see Dame. I'll, I'll give you a five. I, I think I want to see AD. Hmm. I think I want to see... I feel um, like AD's quite private, though. Yeah, but I... I but then again, there's players that we would have thought... Yeah. Sabonis, not... E yeah, yeah, Sabonis, so. do you know what I mean? Um, I think that's helped his... Quite, he seems like a reserved person. Mm. Someone that's not fully comfortable. But you can see he gets comfortable yeah. with being... The limelight being mm. on him, effectively, isn't it? So. Yeah, and he had a good year that year as well. But I mean, he didn't even get all star, but and a lot of people were pissed he didn't yeah, get all star. So yeah, um, so Dame for me, AD, um, mm, pro probably Julius Randall. Just a, a weird one I'm putting out there. Mm. Um, Question is, is he going to be a guaranteed starter with the team? Yeah, more or less. But I think he will. There's yeah. no way he's coming off the bench. It'll be a different angle for them, even if he doesn't. So, what well, do you think? He, he, yeah. Don't you think oh, he'll come true, off the yeah. bench? I mean, uh, start. He's not as definitive. I, I like. I think it's because I like Nasri's game a lot. Do you know what I mean? Right. I think Nasri can start for most teams, mm. <laughs> but obviously he's as effective coming off the bench for the Timberwolves. So. Interesting. Like, because I don't know if the Timberwolves will. They could effectively trade Julius Randle at some point within the next year or two. And get more assets. Yeah. Like they've got enough, not enough big men, but yeah, Nasri yeah, yeah. can come in and start. So yeah. yeah. Who else you got? Um, I want to see a white guy in there. <laughs> Even Chenzo, you should have said instead. Mm, no. Nah, does uh, Does Austin Reeves um yeah, start? Starts yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind seeing. You know his Part his life. Two Lakers. Oh yeah, two Lakers. And Jalen Brown. Maybe Caruso. He was mm. on my list to for starting five. Because he's gone to a new team as well, so mm. yeah, yeah. But Jalen Brown, I want I want to see like because he's like so. Yeah, going to put Jalen Brown in. What for? Because they've put Tatum in. One and Jalen Brown speaks out against everything. <laughs> Obviously, it's it's different because it's 
players produce technically, but mm. do you know what I mean? I'm just saying that for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, th- I mean, I don't think like top name people would do it like Kyrie or, you know, Luca or no. them right. type of people. You never know. Yeah, you never know. We, had, to, we had top guy. Jokic who, definitely who would you, do it. Yeah. Who would you put? <laughs> Didn't even think of that too tough. Uh... I would want Wemby, but I don't think he'd do it yet. Mm. I think he'll probably think it's too early. Mm. Um, oh, this is tough. Uh, I'm well, trying to whether or not they won't do it, though. I'm trying to pick from players from teams that players weren't selected. Mm. So Shea, I like Shea a lot. Yeah, I forgot he's about one Shea. of the few athletes I actually follow on Instagram. So I actually like Shea. Well, you know, Shea was my top three before last season. Mm. Like, my top three players to watch or whatever. So, I rightfully predicted that. Um, Shea, uh, thinking Cat. Now he's with the Knicks. That was mine. Um, well, a few, a few of them. It's a little man. Well, well. Yeah. Shea, Cat. I just feel like Cat's more confident with who he is as a person. Like, I've called him soft as as Banks over the years, but I, I actually like Kat a lot. And <clears throat> him going through what he went through with his mum. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Shay, Kat, uh, I think Devin Booker. Yeah. Forgot about him. And I'm only saying this because Devin Booker is one of the few that not one of the few. I think I want to change my I think I want to put in Devin Booker and uh, Donovan Mitchell, actually. Hmm. Oh, Donovan Mitchell, that's a yeah. good one. That taking, is a good one. You guys are just taking all my shouts. Mm. That's a good one. And we, me and Tash had Mitchell over Booker in the last episode we did. Um, and some I people... I still think some, Mitchell over Some, some people f- um, fought back against that in the comments, but hey, such is life. Um <laughs> Book has gone up in my world. Uh, and probably... I've got one more, isn't it? I feel like saying Paolo Banquero. Mm, that's a good one. Because yeah. I don't think the Magic... I think we spoke about it months ago in one of our episodes. The Magic didn't have a televised game. Ever? Until a year... A year and a couple months into his NBA career. Wow. So his f- first year as a rookie, I don't think the Magic were televised. Wow. And then they were finally televised like three or maybe half a month, half a year into the new season. Wow. I can't remember at the specific time, but I remember saying it. And Bankero, he just showed he's a player and he can get better. So, yeah. I can't remember my five exactly, but yeah, I've named them. It's on camera. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm gonna go cat. Mm-hmm. Giannis. Mm. Jalen Brown. Mm-hmm. Um. Kyrie. Mm. And Halliburton. Mm. Mm. Okay. What about him? Tyrese. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. Not bad at all. Not bad. All right. So. Get us on your executive production, uninterrupted. Yeah. Whoever get me, <laughs> add us to the credits. We've given you names. Mm-hmm. Just get the players' details and then bring them on the pod as well. But yeah. yeah. Trust me, if we, if we want to do narrations and we can discuss the price, man. Hey, Deji's got the voice for narration, you know. <laughs> we can, we can, get me. We can do that, man. He's got the sleeper voice, no, but <laughs> get me. <laughs> but what am I saying? Some uh, of the week. Some, some of the week. week. Let's go. Would you like to go first or would you like one of us to go first? Um, I'll go first. Um, go well, for me, I, I don't really like listen too much music these days. I've, I, all I just listen to like gospel music. Yeah, yeah gospel song then. We've, um, had, we've had gospel on up. I think there's gospel on the playlist. We've said it on Song of the Week. Oh, have you? Yeah. yeah. So, um, she's called Madison Ryan Ward. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Amen. Her voice is just beautiful. Lovely. Um, so yeah, now. go check her out. She's really good voice. Really well, obviously good songs, but like her voice is just beautiful. Fantastic. Madison mm. Ryan Wood. Yeah. Fantastic. Lovely job, Uh Mine is Black Odyssey and BNXN. 
Uh, the song is called Lay Low. Mm. Nice, smooth one. Get me. Um, I've been in my R&B bag recently, so it's come oh, yeah. up on my R&B playlist. <laughs> now Zayn, heavy. Go on, Dej, what's your song of the week? Uh, where is it? I have to scroll down for this. Sorry, guys. I should have been more ready. I mean, you're the one that always makes sure I don't forget song of the week. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might have had this one on before, but this one comes in again. It's from H-E-R, her, and it's called Damage. Oh, yeah. That's, mm. a, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So just a recap of Song of the Week. Yours is? Uh, Amen. Bye. Madison Ryan Ward. Lovely. Mine is Black Odyssey with BNXN, uh, Lalo. And mine is Damage by Her. Fantastic, cool, fantastic. Guess we can wrap up this episode. Get me, uh, Tash, again. Fantastic. I'm coming for Jacob's spot, by the way. <laughs> I'm coming for his spot. Hey, Jacob might just cut everything out. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Get me, but yeah, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, obviously, always fantastic to Pleasure, hear, guys. hear your NBA points. Me. Get me. And also, one thing from the last episode, I feel like you, Jacob and Dej, you don't mind need to do a conversation on music because the last episode there was a music convo brewing towards the end and I remember saying after we recorded, I was like, boy, and me, I'll sit behind and executive produce, yeah. do you know what I mean? But I yeah, like I'm a big music person. There's a music convo that no, was brewing you see, yeah, yeah, last yeah. time and you and Jacob were getting into it, they're just chipping in. I was, I was just like, I think we were, talk, we were talking about like music in the 80s yeah. um, and like talking about Anita Baker and, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire and like stuff like that. And yeah, that's, no, you no, know, cool. I, that's the era that I wish Obviously, I was born in the 80s, but like... I remember you guys saying... Yeah. That was your, yeah. But I wish I was like there to experience the, the music because it was it was really good music. And music that actually made you feel good as opposed to the music now is just like... A bit microwavey. Very. A very tiktok We were Pop. saying it with Denise. And it's time to go. <laughs> but yeah, no, again, fantastic having you on. Of course, you're always welcome here. You know, you don't need to... You don't need to tell us, we like, Tash, you're coming on. I mean, we try to get you on. I think um, you were saying that I'm I'm the second person, well, the first person that's been on sec- twice mm. or something like that. No. Uh, the second person has been on twice. Oh, Vic. Vic's the yeah. first person that's been oh, okay. on twice. Okay. So he, I would, you know, he took your shine, some, you get me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's all good. Um, but yeah, thank you for everyone that has continued watching, listening, commenting, sharing, um, those that definitely share. I might not comment all the time, but I'd always like your post, so I really appreciate that, mm. as well as the other guys do as well. And yeah, just keep on throwing conversations, topics at us. Um, we love in the fact that people are being more interactive, really appreciate that, and don't hesitate. You could be our next guest, get me. There's, <laughs> so, hey, good or bad, we're here to listen to you. But as Dej Lats say, Listen, you tell a friend to tell a friend. Get me. And Dej is also going to say Jacob's land. Listen, just like and subscribe. Hit that blood cloud button. You get me. <laughs> but yeah, Joe, I'm signing out. Dej, I'm signing out. Cash. She's signing out. Mm. Peace. Peace. <laughs>